first thing I'm going to do is to click on HFSS. Uh, I'm going to HFSS solution type and enable auto open region. You can save this as default and you don't have to do this again. I'm going to draw one arm of the monopole. So I'm going to click on the cylinder, click anywhere, design the base and the height, because I'm going to click here, create a cylinder and change the origin. I'm going to put 0, 0, 0,0, uh, one centimeter, that's the gap that I'm gonna do. Radius, uh, one centimeter. Height, I'm gonna use a letter H, and that's a variable that is gonna control the, the height of the cylinder or the length of the arm. I'm gonna put 20 centimeter. You can click here on fit all, um, and well, you, you can change anything. The dimensions, for example, 0 0.5, but if you click here, uh, you can change H. So H is 20, if you change to 10, uh, it goes to 10 centimeter. I'm going to leave it at 20. Um, I'm going to right click on the cylinder and uh, select the sign material. I'm going to put any conductor, let's say uh, aluminum. I'm going to click, click OK. Uh, with this selected, I'm going to right click, add it, uh, duplicate mirror. And I'm going to click here on the origin of the coordinate system. And I'm going to press Z on my keyboard and press down uh, and uh, duplicate this as a mirror. Uh, you can actually click here and see if the values are the same. What I'm going to do is create a port to excite this geometry. So I'm going to change the grid to uh, YZ and click here to draw a rectangle. Note that the cursor change, uh, you know, on specific places of my geometry like this. So I'm going to right click, assign excitations, port, uh, terminal lump and port. You can choose any of these uh, arm. Uh, you know, as a reference. Okay, so your model is done. I'll double click here on the auto and I'm gonna put uh, 300 megahertz and on derivatives, I wanna enable H. So right now, yeah, I need to right click here on the auto and add the frequency sweep. That sounds good. And now I'm going to simulation and analyze all. I have to save this and uh, simulation will start in a few, uh, and should solve in a few seconds. Meanwhile, you can plot a few things, like uh, uh, select this plane, right click on plot fields, E, mag E, click done. Uh, you see that the mesh is adapting, so the field plot is getting better. You can double click on the color bar, go to scale and change it to log. Um, so you can actually animate this. Right click here in field overlays, go to animate, hit OK. So you see the field animation, simulation is done. You can right click here on the results, go to far fields, um, radiation pattern, for example, select the elevation uh, dB uh, for a fee, let's say zero. You report, you can right click and go to show in modeler. To go back to that window, you can double click here or you can go to window tile vertically. So you have uh, two windows uh, overlapping. Okay, uh, you can plot the 3D far field pattern, far field pattern, uh, polar plot. You can go to DB, new report. Uh, you can right click here, go show in modeler, and uh, you see that we have the 3D far field pattern. Uh, if you want to check the S11, right click on results, create terminal solution data report, rectangular plot. You could create a new report, but I want to see the the effect of the height of the cylinder or the length of the arm uh, on the S11. So I'm going to select tune S11, DB, and new report. So now if you take a look at this plot, uh, we have the S11. I'm going to right click on results, tune reports. And now if I change this value, which was uh, 20 centimeter minus uh, 1.52, uh, you see that my S11 changes, right? So you can actually see the effects of the length uh, of the arm of the this dipole, uh, you know, on S11. So, yep, 